This demonstration will be of IBM Tivoli Provisioning Manager 7.2 Patch Management. First, we'll look at setting up the scalable distribution infrastructure and the repositories. Next, we'll do patch acquisition for Windows and Linux. Then, the patches will be approved. Next, we will run an operating system patch compliance check against a number of endpoints. Once that compliance check is run, we will look at the recommendations for both Windows and Linux, approve those recommendations, and run remediation of those compliance issues. First, we'll look at the scalable distribution infrastructure setup. First, navigate to the Content Delivery Service Depot to verify if it is deployed. The depot is used to stage files for the scalable distribution infrastructure. If not deployed, this panel will allow you to deploy the depot. Once found, additional settings are available that allow you to control the bandwidth utilization and file cache. Next, we need to verify that the endpoints have the Tivoli Common Agent deployed. This can be done by navigating to the endpoint and reviewing its credentials tab to verify that the agent server is selected for endpoint operations. Here, we select the server then choose the Credentials tab, at which point we're able to see that the Command Execute, File Transfer, and Ping are all set to Agent Server, which means the management infrastructure is in control. Finally, we look at the YUM repository server and make sure it is present in the Tivoli Provisioning Manager as a file repository. When configuring a Tivoli Provisioning Manager repository for YUM, an entry is created for each YUM repository, which is a physical directory of patches. During the acquisition process, these entries tell the Tivoli Provisioning Manager where to look for patch metadata and binaries. Patch acquisition acquires the metadata required to do patch compliance scanning for different platforms. In this instance, we will be doing Windows Patch Acquisition. First, we navigate to the Patch Acquisition page. Once in the Acquisition Wizard, we choose the operating system. In this case, Windows. Once the platform operating system has been chosen, we choose the infrastructure that we're going to be using to scan and deploy patches with. In ours, it will be Scalable Distribution Infrastructure. This uses the common agent to do our patch management. There are a number of additional filters that can be applied, or they can be left in their default state and the patch acquisition task submitted. This act goes out to the Microsoft website and downloads the required metadata for Microsoft patch scanning. Once the task is completed, you'll be able to scan your endpoints for missing Microsoft patches. Next, we will look at the acquisition of SLES patches. First, we need a SLES repository from which the metadata can be acquired. Then, we navigate to the acquisition screen. Here we choose an operating system of Linux. This specifies that we'll be using one of the Red Hat or SLES platforms for our patch acquisition. Once selected, we see that there is a SUSE file repository from which we can acquire data. This task can then be submitted or scheduled to run. Once the acquisition data has been acquired, we are able to scan endpoints or missing patches related to the SLES operating system. Now we will approve patches based on their group. 
First, we select the advanced search so that we can filter our patch results to just the SLES selected patches. We press the group icon and we search for SLES. This gives us the SLES selected patches group. We check that, press OK to get the filtered results. Now we see only the SLES patches. To select all of these in Approve, we must check the Select Records checkbox at the bottom. This enables individual checkboxes next to each of the patches. Once the checkboxes are applied, we go to the top to select all the patches that were in the group. This selects all 127 patches. We then scroll down and approve the patches for use in the environment. By approving the patches, they can then be used for scanning and deployment. Next, we're going to look at Windows patches. We go to the advanced search and we select groups. This is again to filter the patches displayed based on the Windows Selected Patches group. We select the Windows 2008-2003 patch group. We now have a list of patches that are related to our Windows filter. Here we're going to change the approval state of the result set. We select Approved, and the filtered results are now approved for use in the environment. Next, we will define a compliance check on a group for Windows and for SLES. First, we navigate to the Groups application. Then, we search for the Windows Computer Group. This group contains the endpoints that we want to be scanning. This scanning is called a compliance check by Tivoli Provisioning Manager. We click on the group. We see the computers in the group, and we navigate to the Compliance tab. Here, we need to add a compliance check. The compliance check we want to add is a security check, which is for operating system patches and updates. We select the security check we want to use and press Save. We will see it now appears in the All Compliance Check tab. Next, we go to the settings so we can select a patch group. This group contains the patches that we want to scan for. Here we will select the Windows patch group. This was the same group used to filter our approvals earlier in this demonstration. Now the group is ready for scanning. Next, we will look at our SLES group, which is our Linux computer group. We select the group. Here you can see the endpoint. We go to the Compliance tab. This time, we will use the patch check. This just gets us to the Options menu quicker. Here again, we select the Linux Selected Patch Group. We save the setting, and we are ready for Compliance Scan. Next, we will run a Compliance Scan and check for both our groups. The scan does the physical work of checking the endpoint for missing patches. The check portion is TPM remediating what is missing based on what it knows about in its data center model. We've launched our scan and check for the first group, and now we'll go to the next. Here again, we'll choose the scan and check. This time, we'll opt to go see the task that ran. 
Here we see that there are two provisioning workflows. The first one, the physical scan. The second one, the data center model remediation. Once the task completes, we should see a value in the recommendations. Here we see a value of two recommendations. We're going to click on the arrow to see the recommendations tab. This takes us to the group where we navigate to the recommendations. Here we see detailed view of two recommendations that are being made for our endpoint. We also see in the compliance tab on the right hand side that we have zero of two compliant machines. Next, we're going to navigate over to our Linux group to see how our Celeste patch scanning resulted. We type in the group, select the group, and go to the recommendations, where we see a number of RPM software pieces that are required. Now that we have recommendations, we need to approve and implement those recommendations on the endpoint. This is the act of installing the patches or RPMs against the endpoint target. First, we'll navigate to the Windows group. Here we see we have two endpoints. We travel to the Recommendations tab where we have two machines listed, each with a recommendation. We select both recommendations that we want to implement. We need to approve these before we will be allowed to install them on the endpoint. This step may or may not be done by the same admin. Once we've selected and approved them, we choose to implement. The act of implementing brings up a task launcher. This is because we can launch the task immediately or we can schedule it for a later date. We can also specify notifications as well as recipients and other events that we may want to launch. Once the task is launched, we can go and view it. Here we see the software module that will be installed. This represents the patch that is going to be pushed to the endpoint. We can see that it has succeeded for both machines. Next, we will do an approval and implementation for our Linux group. Here we view the software recommendations. We select the individual RPMs that we want to deploy. We approve the patches. This may or may not be the same user that does the implementation. Once approved, we select to see only the approved patches, which are the two. We select both again and choose to implement. This brings up the task launcher which again allows us to set up notifications as well as schedule or submit immediately the job. When submitting immediately, we have the option to go and view the task. Next, we will review the compliance. Here we go and choose to do a check again. This should reconcile the data center model against what's been deployed in our environment. Here we've chosen to go and see the task that does this compliance. We refresh the screen to see if the task was successful. It has been. We refresh the screen and we see on the right hand side that the two out of two machines are compliant.